The Marxist Democrats aren't just trying to throw Donald Trump in prison. They're also trying to bankrupt him and literally steal his businesses from him so that he won't have the money to properly and vigorously defend himself. This week, a judge in New York just ruled without a trial, without a jury violating the Constitution that Donald Trump shouldn't be allowed to even own a business in New York and is trying to force him to sell Trump Tower, a golf course, another building that he owns there, and fine him $250 million because the judge claims that he inflated the value of some of his properties. The judge, who obviously knows nothing about real estate and didn't take 30 seconds to search Zillow for similar properties in the area, deemed that Mar-a-Lago is worth only $18 million. And because it's worth probably well over 10 times that, she deemed that Donald Trump committed fraud by supposedly inflating the price of the asset when if you just search some of the similar properties in the area on Zillow, like this tiny little plot of beachfront property, well, tiny in comparison, a 2.2 acre plot when Mar-a-Lago is on 17 acres, this one going for $150 million, then you can realize how ridiculous this ruling is. Now, if you are just joining us, it is now just after five o'clock here in New York. I'm sitting in for Nicole Wallace, and we are following major breaking news out of Manhattan. A major blow to Donald Trump's businesses and the image that he has crafted over the decades as a business mogul. Today, a judge has just ruled, just ruled, that Donald Trump committed fraud by repeatedly exaggerating the value of his financial assets. The judge has also canceled the business certificates of Donald Trump and his family members and Alan Weisselberg. That ruling has come in the New York Attorney General's civil case against Donald Trump and his family. A trial is set to begin on Monday. The trial starting on Monday isn't to determine whether or not he's innocent or guilty. The judge just took that upon themselves to do that, violating his Seventh Amendment right, which is supposed to guarantee a trial by a jury in a civil case. The Sixth Amendment guarantees a trial by a jury in criminal cases, Seventh Amendment in civil cases, but the judge just decided that his business licenses are canceled and they're going to try to fine him. They're requesting a $250 million fine on top of that and then force him to sell his businesses, Trump Tower, the golf course, and another building in Manhattan. These are the kinds of things that happen when you're living in a banana republic in a collapsing society. And sadly, none of these issues are brought up at all at the Republican presidential debate on Wednesday, not by any of the moderators at Fox News who hosted the debate, not by any of the candidates, the people challenging Donald Trump for the presidency, because apparently they just don't think that this kind of Marxist political persecution that's only found in a third world country is important. So I've had it with all of these candidates. I don't care how good of a governor Ron DeSantis is. He should have stayed the governor of Florida and waited until 2028 instead of stabbing Donald Trump in the back. I don't care how slick of a talker Vivek Ramaswamy is. They're all traitors. Stay tuned because there's plenty more to come in this video, but real quick, the 20% off sale at markdice.com ends tonight at midnight. So use the promo code TRUMP2024 at the checkout to save 20% off anything by clicking the link in the description below and checking them out. And while the entire liberal media industrial complex is complaining about Donald Trump 24-7, seriously, you could tune in to CNN or MSNBC any day of the week, any time, night or day, and they will be complaining about Donald Trump within 10 seconds. This is what's happening to our, well, what once was our country. We're getting breaking news from the border. Customs and Border Patrol sources telling Fox News They've recorded 11,000 encounters in the past 24 hours. They say it's the single highest day in recent memory in that town of Eagle Pass in Texas. Alone, Eagle Pass saw more than 4,000 this weekend. Coming in, 11,000 encounters that they know of. So it's probably double that. So at least conservative 15,000 came in one single day. The invasion has gotten so bad that the media and the Democrats can't even cover it up anymore. So you have Democrat mayors and governors urging the migrants not to come to the big blue cities, but instead they want them to brown your small town. We have been welcoming. We have been gracious. We have been supportive. 
but we have to point out the fact and make sure that people coming across the border who think there are plentiful hotel rooms and services in New York City, we hit our capacity. So we're asking other areas to embrace these individuals, but we're not going to compromise who we are as a state with the Statue of Liberty in our harbor. So that's what I want to be clear about. Yeah, we're not going to close the border. We're not going to turn them back. We're not going to round them up and put them on buses and go dump them in Mexico, which we should. Instead, we're just going to start shipping them across the country and to the Midwest and into swing states and Republican states and small towns and then giving them tax dollars in the form of welfare. And the Republicans, with the exception of maybe a dozen or so members of Congress, aren't any better. Here's Mitch McConnell, the Senate Minority Leader, the most powerful Republican in the Senate, the spokesman of the Republican Party. Providing assistance for the Ukrainians to defeat the Russians, that's the number one priority for the United States right now, according to most Republicans. That's sort of how we see the challenges confronting uh, the country at the moment. The most important thing for Republicans right now is that we bankrupt the country sooner by giving even more of our money to Ukraine. And let's not forget that Kevin McCarthy, the Speaker of the House, the most powerful Republican in the House of Representatives, and the third most powerful person in the world, the third in line for the presidency, remember it's president, vice president, and then Speaker of the House, uh, is wearing the flags of a foreign country on the floor of Congress. And here is the ultimate example of projection. The Democrats accusing the Republicans of doing the exact same thing that they themselves are guilty of. This is James Clapper, who used to be the head or the director of national intelligence, basically the head of all the intelligence agencies, worried that if Donald Trump gets reelected, that he's going to put his political opponents in prison. In a recent profile, uh, General Milley raised the possibility that he thought if Trump was reelected, he would throw his opponents in jail. He said that he would be at the top of the list. Do you think that that's a real concern? And are you concerned that you could be on Trump's enemies list? Well, sure. Uh, I think there are probably uh, a lot of people uh, that are potentially uh, on such a list. Uh, and again, that's uh, that's reprehensible. Uh, I, I think General Milley's comment was he didn't think Gen uh, President Trump would uh, be reelected. Well, I'm not so sure about that. So yeah, that's a that's a real concern for uh, for many of us. So this is what it's come down to. They believe they have to throw Donald Trump in prison. Otherwise, Donald Trump will throw them in prison because, of course, we know who the real criminals are. And Congressman Eric Swalwell thinks that the reason Joe Biden's approval ratings are so low and so few people have confidence that even if he's able to make it till the 2024 presidential election, that he probably can't beat Donald Trump in a rematch is because the liberal media isn't attacking Republicans enough. Uh, Republicans, you know, will continue to tell lies uh, about President Biden. And, and that's in part why I, I think his approval rating is as low as it is, is that they tell these lies. We don't punch back hard enough. We play on our side of the field rather than theirs. And then on the right wing uh, media ecosystem, it just reinforces those lies. And then they use the low poll numbers to justify why they're going to lean in uh, even more. The right wing media ecosystem, he says, what, two cable channels and two newspapers, a couple talk radio hosts, uh, some YouTubers and Twitter personalities versus CNN, MSNBC, ABC, NBC, CBS, virtually every other newspaper in the country, all of academia, all the big tech platforms, minus Twitter now, uh, the entire Hollywood propaganda machine. <laughs> oh, and I forgot about corporate America as well. So there just aren't enough liberal media institutions and allies out there. They need more. But thank God we're at least still allowed to use the internet, at least somewhat, because then we can share gems like this. Does anybody think he's going to make it to the starting gate? I mean, the guy can't find his way off of a stage. Look, here's a stage. Here's a stage. I've never seen this stupid stage before, right? I've never seen it. But if I walk left, there's a stair. And if I walk right, there's a stair. And this guy gets up. Where am I? 
<laughs> Where the hell am I? Where am I? Well, right now we're on my YouTube channel, at least while it lasts. Something that definitely won't last for much longer because it ends tonight at midnight is the promo code TRUMP2024, which will save you 20% off of any of my shirts from MarkDice.com. So order your Wanted for President shirt, the new and improved, featuring Donald Trump's mugshots, your Conspiracy Theorist for Right shirt, or any of my awesome designs, all available in a t-shirt, long sleeve, and a hoodie, and a whole bunch of different colors as well. So head on over to MarkDice.com or click the link in the description below. Enter the promo code TRUMP2024 to check out the save 20% off today, and check them out. <laughs>